The Wells criteria for pulmonary embolism is a risk stratification score used to predict the likelihood of acute pulmonary embolism. In individuals whose medical history and physical examination indicate that acute PE could be a probable diagnosis. So, here's a model to diagnose PE based on Wells criteria. But remember, the model should be applied only after a history and a physical examination suggest that venous thromboembolism as a diagnostic possibility. It should not be applied to all patients with chest pain or dyspnea or to all patients with leg pain or swelling. This is the most common mistake made. Also, never ever do the D-dimer first, before the history and physical exam. The monster in the box is that the D-dimer is done first and is positive, as it is for many patients with non-conditions, and then the physician assumes that venous thromboembolism is now possible and then the model is done. It's an amazing calculator by MDCal, which is an amazing tool website for medical students to calculate any kind of score. Moving on, here we can see that we need to take history to rule out the best probable answer to these seven questions. First, we need to look for the clinical signs and symptoms of DVT, which include swelling in the affected leg. Rarely, there's swelling in both legs. The pain often starts in your calf and can feel like cramping or soreness. There could be red or discolored skin on the leg, and there could be a feeling of warmth in the affected leg. If any two of the above signs are present, we need to score it as, yes, which will count for 3+. plus. Now, the next question is quite tricky, and you need to know, what exactly a patient with PE looks like. PE has a wide variety of presenting features, ranging from no symptoms to shock or sudden death. The most common presenting symptom is dyspnea, followed by chest pain, classically pleuritic but often dull pain, and cough. Typically, pain gets worsened with breathing and, in severe cases, there may be hemoptysis, syncope, and cyanosis. Based on this data derived from patients, you need to answer the following question. Is PE the number one diagnosis or equally likely? If the answer is yes, it will receive a score of 3 plus once more. Next is the heart rate. If a patient has a heart rate of more than 100, then yes, it will score more than 1.5 plus. Next, immobilization for at least 3 days or surgery in the previous 4 weeks will score 1.5 plus. As the development of DVT is more common during this period and is one of the high risk factors after surgery. Next, look for a history of the patient. Previous, objectively diagnosed PE or DVT can score 1 plus. Next the history of hemoptysis score as 1 plus and, the last variable is whether the patient has malignancy with or without treatment within 6 months, or if palliative care also scores as 1 plus. On a scale of 1 to 12.5, above 6.5 is high risk, between 3 and 6.5 it is moderate, and below 3 it is low risk of being diagnosed with pulmonary embolism. Note, High risk group have a 40.6% chance of PE in an ED population. Another study assigned scores 4 as PE likely and had a 28% incidence of PE. So, if your score gets above 6.5 plus without the likeness of pulmonary embolism, you need to get an immediate CT thorax and D-dimer value and start treatment accordingly. To learn about the various scales used in medicine and in ICU settings, please subscribe and support us, thank you.